you get me a mic room? Why don't you just yep. put your, your jacket on top on, over that chair? And that way. All right, and then you can come and pick a seat, any seat. You need to take your jacket off, Will? You gotta be warm? Yeah, why don't you do that? Why don't you take your jacket off? Does it. All right. Oh, Lola, guess who you get to sit next to? Someone. All right. Let me see. I love that you have name tags on. Let me tell them. Um, Evelyn. Evelyn. Who are you? Cody. Cody. Fred, how are you? All right. Blanca. Will. And Lola. Let's go like this. Okay. Did they tell you what we're going to do today? No. no. Maybe a maybe a little bit of writing stuff. No, not not writing. They, I think people think I'm the writing guy. That's you know one of the things that I've not said. So I've taken like what we're going to be doing. If it's not writing, what's kind of the opposite of writing? Reading. Reading. So I thought we'd do some reading kind of things today. Yeah. So okay. How are you as readers? What how do you what do you think of yourself as a reader? Good. You're good. Well, you feel good about yourself. You're confident. Lola, what about you? Are you confident as a reader? Yeah. You are. Uh, Blanca, I can't see you. Let me see. How about you as a reader? Good? All right. Fred? Pretty good. Cody? Good. And Emily? Awesome. Awesome? Okay. So, um, yeah, we're going to do some reading things, but I thought um, I want you to look at this and see if you recognize something like this. First. And I'm going to move our tools. We're going to need these tools later. But what do you, what do you, do you, does this look familiar to you? What is it? What is it? What? Where have you seen it before? Second grade. Second, say it again. Second grade. Just saw that structure. Is it, is it beginning, middle, end? No. Well, here's the deal. If you're not sure, what could you do if, you know, if I'm, if I'm saying it's the beginning, middle, and end? Say it again. What are you doing, Fred, right now? You are. You're, what are you doing right now? Are you reading and thinking? So everybody right now, I want you to look at what's on that graph. I want you to read and see what's in that graphic organizer. And I want you to ask if it's beginning, middle, and end. Is it beginning, middle, and end? Well, a, a, a real quick one. Is it beginning, middle, and end? It is? Take your finger and look at that first box and stick your finger in that first box. Does that say beginning? No. What does it say? It says introduction. So it's not a beginning, middle, and end, right? It's an introduction. Then take your finger and move down to the middle box or the center box. What does that say? Body. It says body with reasons. And then the last box says conclusion opinion. So is this a BME? No. It is not a BME. When do you use a BME or a beginning, middle, and end? When you're writing a story, do you think we're going to be talking about stories? No. What kind of what kind of reading or writing are we going to be talking about? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You say have you ever heard of introduction, body, conclusion before? Uh, no. I've heard of introduction. All right. Well, this is about informational text. What's informational text? Uh, so informational. Okay. Yeah. But I want to kind of be a little serious here, Will. Um, what do you think? What word do you get? Yes. What do you want to say? What's informational text? Um, text that. Um, gives uh, text that has what? Information. That has information. That's exactly right. Is a story or a narrative another word for you know um, a BME or um, a story is a narrative? Have you heard that before? Like a personal narrative. That this is informational text. That those are two different things, right? A BME for a story and an introduction, body, conclusion, or. It is IBC, my good man. That's what I was just going to talk about. So here, I want you to take a pen. Do me a favor. Um, pencil. And uh, right outside the boxes, can you write IBC for me? Because that's what I want. Just like FBME, I want you to understand. Nope, I want you to just do it right here, like IBC, right next to the boxes. Uh, that is perfect, sir. Oh, sorry. Okay. And um, you know what I want you to do? I want you over here. I want, why don't you do it? A capital, capital I, capital B, capital C. Oh, here we go. Good man. Here we go. All right. Um, and here's the, here's the deal right next to that. I love it. 
Maybe, you know like what parentheses are? Yeah, those little things. Yep. Does everybody know what a parentheses is? Yes. Okay. So right next to the I in parentheses, write a B. Well, now I just want you to get an idea of how it's the same, right? It's kind of, they're kind of close. So you know what a parentheses is? Watch me do this, right? Kind of like that. Have you ever seen those before? Okay. And then, so do a B, M, E. Why am I having you do a, no, do, no, the M's going to go down here, and the E is going to go down there. Why am I having you do that? Yeah, because IBC, an in informational text, is like a BME in a story. Do you ever use a BME in informational text? No. Never, yeah. ever, ever in a million years. <laughs> a story is always BME, and informational text is always an IBC, right? What's IB? Don't want to be peaking. You guys aren't peakers, are you? No. All right, tell me. Actually, flip your papers over really quickly. What does I stand for? Introduction. Introduction. What does B stand for? What C stand for? C. B. C. A. <laughs> okay. I want to see if you were awake. You ready? All right. So flip it back over. Um, informational text is always structured with an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. All right. So, and guess what we're going to be doing today? Doing writing. We're not going to be doing writing. I told you what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some reading, and I have an article for you that I want you to look at right now. And since you're all pretty good readers. Um, this is going to be going to be good. So just just looking quickly, what's this piece going to be on? What's the piece? What's the article going to be on? Handwriting comments. Say it again. Handwriting comments. Handwriting comments. Does that make sense to you? Look at the title really carefully. Handwriting. Handwriting. Handwriting counts. So what's this article going to be about? About? About how, how that writing good counts. Yeah, that writing good is, give me another word besides counts. Writing well what? Is? Important. Yeah, writing well is important. And actually, if you look underneath the, uh, underneath the, uh, the uh, illustration right there, it kind of tells you um, what this piece is going to be about. I will practice writing. I will practice writing. Yep, and I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the text right underneath the picture. What's it say right there? Don't write off penmanship. Studies show that minding your P's and Q's have, has many benefits. What's that mean, minding your P's and Q's? Yes? Okay, that's right, because what's done, some kids sometimes will make sure they don't know which way their P's face and their Q's, right? And they say, and this basically is saying if you're careful, that there's a lot of things that, you know, a lot of good things will come out of it if you're careful with your, with your what? With your handwriting, that's exactly right. Um, so here's what I want you to do. Just take, a, just take your finger right now, and where, um, where, does the, where does the introduction start, do you think? Where does the introduction start? You think so? You think Steve Ram? Um, no, I'm going to tell you that's not the introduction. That's just telling us. That's just yeah, telling us. Right okay, right there. What is that Steve Ram? What do you think that's it telling us? Who he is. It is telling us who he is, right? And he is giving us an opinion. And so this is telling us why we should listen to him. Can I read it to you? Is that all right? Steve Graham, a professor of education at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, conducts research on writing instruction uh, and development. He believes that good penmanship sets the foundation for strong writing. So why should we listen to him? What's he do? He does help. Yeah, and what is his job? Well, and where would you, where, where do you need to be looking right now to tell me what he does? Yes, Fred? Uh, you'll get a story or do you look at just what I just read to you? So what does this guy do? Look at, look, read that to yourself a little bit and tell me what he does. Why should we listen to him? Fred? 
What says? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. He's also a professor in education, right? He teaches at a university or a college, right? So he sounds like a, he's a guy who should know, right? All right. So are you ready for me? How about if I read and you guys want to follow along while I read? What do you think about that? All right. Ready? Um, everyone, point to the introduction. Where's this? Where's the introduction start? Is that the introduction or is that the uh, the about the author? Where are we going to start to read? Okay. Ready? George Washington, our country's first president, practices penmanship diligently or carefully. As a boy, he carefully copied 110 sayings on how to behave, known as the rules of civility, in order to fine tune his in order to fine tune his script. Kids today might argue that had Washington owned a computer, he wouldn't have spent his time mastering neat handwriting. Is that what you think? You think so? Maybe not, but research shows that practicing handwriting does more than produce a pretty paper. Although he may not have known it, Washington was improving his writing skills. You can improve your writing skills too. I have found that students who study handwriting for 45 minutes each week are able to improve how fast they write, how much they write, and how well they write. How does practicing penmanship make you a better writer? By not letting penmanship get in your way. When you are not adept or skillful at handwriting, you expend energy on the mechanics or just the writing part. This interferes that, uh, with the creative flow of ideas. Once you've mastered the pen or pencil, you can spend all your energy on making your own ideas clear. And don't underestimate the value of neatness. Throughout your education, you will be asked to write your answers on standardized tests. Do you guys know about standardized tests? Do you have one coming up at the end? at the end of the year, the big test, yeah, that's a standardized test. If test grades, if, if test graders cannot read your responses, you may not get full credit. If you cannot write quickly, you may not have enough time to answer all the questions. Follow Washington's leads and practice your handwriting. Make sure that all your lowercase letters are the same size. Learn to make all your letters correctly and quickly. Be sure that your writing is dark enough. Write on a straight line. You don't have to trade in your computer for a pencil, but if you use a pencil, you will sharpen the way you express your ideas. So right on, baby. <coughs> that baby part was mine. <coughs> didn't say that in the article. All right. So anyway, so what, did you, what do you think about that, this piece? Do you know what kind of a piece this is? It's kind of informational, but it's also somebody's opinion. Right, did you know that? Yeah. What's the opinion? <coughs> What's an opinion? Yes, my dear? Something somebody thinks. Something somebody thinks, yep. And Fred, what were you going to say? She took, she took it. So what is, just off the top of your head, what does this guy think? Say, what, what's he thinking? <coughs> so what is he saying? So he's saying that writing is going to, what does writing do for you? What is, what is your handwriting or what does writing carefully do for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what else do you say? You remember? We think back. So that it helps people read what you're writing. Right. Well, we're gonna have, we're gonna go back and we're gonna we're gonna try to figure out what he's trying to say to us, right? But I want you to go back to the graphic organizer again. You know where the you know what that graphic? Have you have, have you heard of the graphic organizer? Yeah. All right. So how is an opinion structured? If you how did how do we structure an opinion? How do you set up an opinion? It tells you on the graphic organizer. Where do you think it tells you on the graphic organizer? What goes into uh, what goes into an opinion? All eyes. Where should all eyes be? Looking at me? No. Where on the paper? You're looking for what? Okay. An opinion has an introduction, Fred. Um, and it tells you right in there what goes in the introduction. All right, the lead and opinion. So when you do an introduction, you have to start out. Do you know what a lead is? How about this? Do you, have you ever heard of a hook? Yep. What's a hook? Well, it should be, but that doesn't sound like writing, does it? It sounds like fishing. What do you think a lead in, or a hook in writing is? How about, say it again? It, 
It's a weed, right? It's a what? No, a weed, right? Um, how about have you ever heard of a grabber? Say it again, like in Toy Story. Um, it's about when you get, when you, a lead is when you get somebody's attention right away, right? That you do something that grabs the reader, right? So when you write an opinion, you have to make sure you grab their attention and then tell them what? Right up front. What their opinion is. And then once you do that, you have to go to your next section or your next paragraph. And what's your next paragraph all about? First of all, it's called the... It's called the body, and what goes into the body? Reasons. Your reasons, all right? And then you have another paragraph. What is that called? It's called the conclusion, and what goes into the conclusion? Opinion. You have to kind of go back to the opinion again, right? And so what we're gonna do is you're gonna, we're gonna read, we're gonna look at this guy's, what he wrote, and see if he has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Are you ready to do that? All right. Um, so, do you like working a lot or a little? A lot. Sounds like we've got mixed things here. Um, who do you think needs to work more, you or the teacher? Well, in this case, guess who did most of the work? Me. What do you think of that? Are you for it or against it? For it. You're for it? All right. I'm, I'm giving you I mean, the graphic organizer, the same graphic organizer, and what do you notice about this, this graphic organizer? What do you notice about it? No. Yep, it's all, it, how much, how many, how, is, what, what percentage of it is filled? Uh huh. Do you know percentage of that? What percentage um, of that is, or how much is filled? That's mostly food. Is it 50 percent or a little bit more than 50 percent? I think a little bit more than 50%. I love that. <laughs> uh, I was thinking about 60% or something. What do you think? Maybe a little bit more. Okay. So most of this is filled out for you. What part do you think you're going to have to work on? You're going to have to work on the body. I saved the best for last for you. How's that? I saved the most fun for you. What do you think? Are you ready to have some fun? Okay. All right. So here's what I want to do. Do you know what these are right here? Well, highlighters. they're highlighters. So we're going to do a little highlighting right now, yeah. all right? Because I want to, I want to stop. I, I'm going to show you what I did. Can I show you what I did first? Because he's the most important person in the whole entire world. Me. Look at you know that you don't even know me, but I'm the most important person in the whole entire world. You. All right. All right. So here's what I want to do. I want you to take the article, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to read what I wrote down for it. You know what these are called in the introduction? What are these called? What are these called right here? Paragraphs. Uh, they are paragraphs. I love that. I was going to ask you how many paragraphs do typically. How many when you write a, when you write a piece when you write an informational piece or an opinion piece or a story? How many paragraphs does it have to be? It has to be three. Does it have to be three all the time? Uh, wrong. Yes. It has to be three always, 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 unless your teacher tells you it doesn't have. All the time you're going to write three paragraphs, right? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the article. Everybody get the article? And where does the introduction start? Everybody point to the introduction. With your pencil, put a little mark. Where's your, do you have a, do you have a story? I know, you got so many pieces of paper. How, many, how can you have so many pieces of paper? Make a mark where your introduction starts. Is that the introduction or is that the, is that telling us about, where does the introduction start? Where does the introduction start? It starts with Washington. That's where it starts. And here's what I want to do. I'm going to, I'm going to read my notes, and I want you to highlight the notes that, that I'm reading to you. I'm going to show you the notes I took on this article for the introduction. You ready? The first note I have, and you see it right there, is George Washington. Highlight it, on, highlight it over here first, and then we'll highlight it on the paper. Yep. Yep. We'll make sure that we get everything. Because I want to make sure I took good notes. So, all right. What's the next thing I, I took notes down here? How about fine-tuned fine -tuned writing? I want you to highlight that in your, on my notes, fine-tuned writing, and I want you to go in and, hi and highlight it on the, 
see if you can find it in the text. It might not look exactly like it. I might have had to change the words a little bit, but you, if you get it close, right? Yeah, what comes after fine tune? Yeah, is that the same thing you think is fine tune writing? Yes. Yep. Here's the next thing I put. Copy, copying 110 sayings. Highlight that on your note, on the, on the graphic organizer. I know, you've got a lot of things going on. We'll see how coordinated you are. 110 sayings. Okay. Everybody get that? What are you looking for, sir? Are you, did you do that? Are you jumping ahead? Coding? All right, and here's the thing. Do you think the next thing we highlight is gonna be way at the end of this piece, or are we still gonna be up by the introduction? We're gonna be at the introduction, I love that. So here's the next thing I want you to highlight over here. If owned computer. Highlight that, just if owned computer. I'm, and see if you can highlight that. Don't jump too far ahead, guys. It should be kind of, you should be seeing it right next to, right around that last one you highlighted. I see the computer, but I don't see it. Okay, well, it, it does, it's not going to be exactly like that, so you have to, it might be a little bit different. You saw owned a computer, right? Yeah. Okay. And then the last thing I have on my notes, if owned a computer, wouldn't need to, I put. Highlight that. Did you get everything? Wouldn't need to. All right. Okay. So if you look right up here in my notes, I wrote an L right next to my notes up here. Does everybody see the L? Yeah. What does that stand for, do you think? The L. It stands for the lead. And what we just, which, what paragraph in this is his lead? What number paragraph is his lead? What? The first paragraph is his lead, and his lead is about who? George Washington. George Washington practicing his handwriting or script, right? Uh huh. Now look right here. What's coming up next that I'm going to, my opinion, okay, we're going to look for his opinion. What paragraph is that going to be? It is going to be the next one. Oh, maybe not. Well, let's look and see. You ready for my notes? It starts with maybe not. Cross it off your list and then look for it in the article. You guys are very organized. I love that. All right. Do you, do you want to just go through right now and do the rest of them? Mm -hmm. All right. You don't, cause I think I'm slowing you down right now. What do you think? All right, so check off your list and find and find that, and let's talk, after you get done, let's talk about what you're going to do. Can you read my writing? Let's, I did some abbreviate. H-W-T-G stands for handwriting, W-T-G stands for writing. Oh, my word. Right. Okay. 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 Why do I, why do I do abbreviations? So I can write short or I can take notes, right? You're not just pretty faces, you're also smart. Now remember, I might not have said the exact same thing. You might have to say, oh, I think this is what he meant, right? Because did I improve skills? Like, I didn't, if the article didn't say quickness, it said something else.
Are you quick or fast? You're done? Okay. Hang on, let's give everybody a chance. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do, because what do you think is coming up next? Fill in our name. What's coming up Fill next? Fill in the what? Body. Uh huh. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I want you to do in a minute, because I want you to kind of do, do it. Is everybody almost done? So what did you think about my note shaking? Was it pretty good? Yep. Did it follow the, yep. So when I did that, when I, for this guy, um, for Steve Graham, his introduction, how many paragraphs was his introduction? Find your mark. Where does the pair, Where does the introduction start? So, how do you know? How do you know? How, how do you count paragraphs? The indentation. So, I want you to think about the indentations and think about what you have highlighted. I want you to tell me how many paragraphs is his introduction. All right, let's look right here. You ready? Can I use yours for a minute? Right here. So if it starts right here, here's the first introduction. This is the first paragraph. Is that part of his in introduction? Mm -hmm. Yep. Here's the next paragraph, right? Mm -hmm. And where does that paragraph stop? It starts over here. So how many paragraphs is this? How many indentations? Two. One? Two. two. His introduction is two paragraphs long, right? What do you think about that? All right, his first paragraph is the, is the lead. His second paragraph is his opinion. What's coming up next? Body, body. The body, and the body is going to have what? Three. It's going to have what? Three. Three what? Paragraphs. How do you know? <laughs> Hang on a minute. What, is the, what, does the, what does the body have to have? Look at your graphic organizer. Reasons. It has to have reasons. Guess what you're going to read for right now? You're going to find out reasons for what? Why you wrote it. For the, why, you have to, why you have to have good handwriting, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the next paragraph. I want you to read it. And I want you to highlight the reasons, right? Because what, what has to happen is you have to have a reason and that you have to give me a little bit more about the reason. So I want you to give, come up with at least one reason in the next paragraph. Can you do that? How many paragraphs are you going to read? Three, two, two, one. I want you to read the next pair. I want you to read the next paragraph, and I want you to find a reason. Okay, so I want you to just read the next paragraph and see if you can find a reason for handwriting, and you can highlight it when you think you found the reason. Nope, nope, I don't want you to do that. We're not right here, so I don't want you to do that. Right, you can do it right over here. See if you can highlight the reason. Do you know when you're taking notes, how many, how many, when you take notes, how many words can you put on for one bullet? Like about five Yeah, how about three? You, can, you know when you do a bullet, you take notes, so you can only take three words. So when you highlight reasons, I only want you to write to highlight three words at a time. Okay, so when you find the reason, just highlight three. Did you highlight one three? Yes. <laughs> so you want to use the highlighter, give highlights? Yeah. Oh, okay. So when you find a reason, let me just in that per, in that next paragraph, I just want you to find a reason. Don't highlight too much because you can't that's why I, I don't want you to highlight any more though. Okay. Did you highlight? How many words did you highlight? Highlighted three. Did you find some, Will? Did you find a sentence? How many words can you highlight, Will? Three. So choose them carefully. You'll say again. What do you think the reasons for what? What was the? No, you can't have four. You can only have three. Choose them carefully. Do they have to be three words in a row, or can you just highlight three words, even if there's 
words between them. Can you just highlight three words that aren't connected? You can. So I want you to highlight three words that you think are the reason for the opinion. So what is, what's this article about? That write, writing in good handwriting, and so what do you think the reasons are going to be? Yeah, what what happens? You know, how do you you know what are some of the things you get from good handwriting? All right, does everybody have something? Yeah. Do you have something? Yes. How many did you highlight some words? I You did. Where are they highlighted? Well, is that part is that part of the body or is that part of the reasons? I mean, is that part of the introduction? I want you to look at this paragraph right here. And yeah, can you find something in that next paragraph right there? find out. So what did you come up with for, what do you think is, you know, one of the things for good handwriting? What did you come up with in that, in that paragraph? All right, so you can make your ideas clear. What did you come up with? Say, read what you have. What did you highlight? Say, not letting it what? Not not letting it get in your way? Yeah, that's right. What did you have, Fred? What did you come up with? Energy. Say it again. Energy. You expend energy, right? That's right. That sometimes that takes a lot of energy. Blanca, what did you come up with? What did you highlight? Say it again. Adept. That's, well, you know what that word adept means? Is that you're not skillful at handwriting. So if you're, if it says if you're adept at handwriting, you'll be able to do what? What does it say if you're adept at handwriting? Uh -huh, that if you're not adept, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll expend a lot of energy. Right, what did you have, Will? You'll expend energy if you're not adept or if you're not skillful, what did you end up? You did expend, uh-huh. Right, so it's, that's right. So it says if you're not adept at handwriting, you won't expend energy. Does that make sense? All right, now, if you're going to take notes over here, wait, 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 wait. How many, are you going to write the whole sentence? Or are you going to, how, what, how many words are you going to write over three, here? Three. three words. What? Yeah, but we have to make sure we have the right words. So what are we going to say? Let's do it together first. What are we going to write for three words? All right, so but I want to say, um, if you don't see good handwriting, handwriting, mean, how, how are we going to say that? I don't know. I know, because we have to keep it down there, right? Um, what, we, what can we say? Say it again. Uh, let me see what we look here. It says, um, uh, expend energy, not adapt. I guess we'll do four. Not adapt, expend energy. How's that? Can we do? Can we write that? All right, you gonna do that? That's all right. Just we'll just just write it down here. After you get the notes down, I want you to read the next paragraph and see what he says there. See if he's still talking about reasons down there. Can you read the next paragraph? And let's see if he has more reasons or not. 
He, he does have more reasons. All right, so you're going to highlight. How many words are you going to highlight? Three. I love it. If you have it highlighted, you can take your notes on the second part over here. Because how many reasons is he talking about in this article? One or two? Did you find a reason in the next in the next section? Okay. In the next paragraph? And I think we're going to be done, so. So what's that, does he have more than one reason? The first reason we talked about, right, was expending energy, right? What's the next reason? What did you have, what did you put down there? All right, the value of neatness, right? What, and, but what's the value of neatness gonna do? What is it, what do they say about the value of neatness? Standardized tests. Say what did you have, Will? Right, it's gonna help you on standardized tests, right? So if, you, if you're neat, it's gonna help you on, so if you wrote, if you wrote um, don't under, underestimate neatness, what do you need to add to your notes, do you think? Neatness. Neatness on standardized tests, right? So add, add standardized tests to your notes. If you, did, if you just wrote neatness, right, standardized tests. Are you going to write standardized test on there? <coughs> Are you going to misspell standardized test? No. How come you're not going to misspell it? Because it's in the text. And I think we're done. So who can tell me what are the two reasons that Stephen Graham thinks that good handwriting does for you? What is he? All right, it helps you not expend energy. And what's the second reason? Um, it helps you on standard, standardized tests. It helps you on standardized tests. That's exactly right. And then you don't have to do it because who did the work on the conclusion? I see. <laughs> You're not going to take I take credit for the work I did, right? I did the I did the thing, and you can probably take this. I need the markers, but you could probably go back. You can take these two things back. And you can see if I did a good job on note taking with the conclusion. You can uh, you can take everything except for the pencils and the uh, highlighters. Has anybody told you today that you people are good? That you're very smart? With, uh, yes. What did you think of doing this? Was this okay? Did you like doing it? What what did you like about it? You like the highlighter? <laughs> what, what, what did you like about it? Learning more. You learned more? What did you learn? What are some of the things that you learned? Good handwriting. Yeah. And did you also learn about an opinion? What did you, you learn about an opinion? Before you go, you have to tell me what you learned about an opinion. <laughs> Say it again. All right, yeah, a lead. Uh, an opinion has to have a lead. Where do you find a lead? The introduction. All right, what else have you learned about an opinion? It's what somebody thinks. That's exactly right. What's another thing you know about an opinion? Look at your graphic organizer, that will help you.
that an opinion has to have. It has to have a lead, it has to have an opinion, it has to have, it has to have reasons. And what else does it have to have? A conclusion which goes back to your opinion. Okay, see ya. Nice job, you guys.